Hello and welcome to The Postcard Professor, where we take complex ideas and explain them in the space of a postcard. Welcome back to this series of videos on engineering dynamics. We today are going to be looking at projectile motion in two dimensions. And this is another situation where we have constant acceleration. So the acceleration in the y direction, we're again going to approximate as negative 10 meters per second squared. In the x direction, however, we know that the acceleration is equal to zero. So we have two equations to deal with, which means that we need twice as many accelerations. We also need twice as many initial conditions. So let's look at our ball again. Let's draw an axis so that we have an origin point to look at. This distance here, we're going to call the position in x at time zero. The distance from the x-axis is the position in y at time zero. And we also have a velocity in both directions. And this could be either two velocities, a vx and a vy, or it can be a velocity and a theta. So let's start plugging in some numbers for this. Let's say that our Vx is going to be 4 meters per second. Our Vy is 3 meters per second. And let's choose our Sx to be 3 meters and our Sy to be 2 meters. So before we get into the math, Let's just think a little bit about what actually happens with this ball. So this thing has a starting point, an initial velocity. And we know from physics that this is going to follow a parabolic trajectory. And at some point, it's going to reach a high point and then finally impact the ground. So the question we have is, when does this actually occur? And to do that, we need to go and find our equations. So these have the exact same starting point as before. And in fact, things don't even change in the y direction. The acceleration, again, is the time derivative of our velocity in the y direction. And we went through the process of finding the kinematic equations from this in the previous video. So we can skip straight to the answer. The position at time t is going to be equal to the initial position, 2 meters, plus our initial velocity multiplied by our time t, minus half of our constant acceleration multiplied by t squared. So this equation describes the vertical location of the ball as it flies along. Now what we're interested in is when this ball hits the ground. And the way we can say that mathematically is just by saying that sy at some time t is equal to zero. Well, now we have an equation to solve. I'm going to drop the units. As long as we give time in seconds, we know that the units are all work out. So we can just say that this is 2 plus 3t minus 5t squared. And here we have a quadratic equation. And so we can plug that into the quadratic formula. So t is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4a times c. I wrote this backwards. So this is our a, this is our b, this is our c, all divided by 2a. So this is going to be negative 10. So this becomes negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 49 divided by negative 10, or negative 3 plus or minus 7 all over negative 10. So this becomes either negative 10 divided by 10, which is 1, or a negative 4 tenths. And as we said, b should be in seconds, so let's make sure that we keep our units there now that we've gotten through the math. So that takes care of our y direction. We know when the ball hits the ground, but we don't know where. So let's look at the x direction. So just as before, 
we know that our acceleration is the time derivative of our velocity in the x direction this time. Well, we said that our acceleration is equal to zero. This means that our velocity is a constant, and that constant is just the initial velocity. And we can go ahead and integrate again, and we end up with the position in the x direction at time t being equal to the initial position plus our initial velocity multiplied by the current time. So now we can plug in some numbers. S of x at time of one second. We know it's the one second because we're interested in going forward in time. We don't want to go backward in time from our initial point. So the position is going to be equal to our initial position, which was three meters, plus our initial velocity, four meters per second, multiplied by one second. So we end up with seven meters. So now we can draw this picture in a little more fully. This distance here is three meters. This distance was two meters. And the distance until the ball actually hits the ground was seven meters. So this wasn't perfectly to scale, but we're pretty close. So not much changed here between the 1D and the 2D. We asked a slightly different question. We asked what time the ball would hit a specific height. But once we found that, finding the x location uh, was very straightforward. So that's all we're going to do uh, with our constant acceleration. Uh, next time, we'll start looking at some variable acceleration and let the acceleration change over time.